What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the vlog today, and welcome to my garage, where I just so happen to keep my E36 M3, among with a bunch of other bull crap. <laughs> the problem that I've been having is, I basically get to drive this car like once a week if I'm lucky, most of the time it's like once every couple weeks, and that means that most of the time that I come to start this car, it just doesn't have enough power to get it going, so it's pretty much dead. And I don't have any power here since this is more of a storage unit, so I can't plug in a trickle charger or anything like that, but I have found a solution. Check this little thing out right here. Now I'd be surprised if any of you guys know what this thing is, but I'm about to show you. If you check right now with my keys, you see I'm pushing the button, but nothing's happening. That's because there's no power to the car, not because it's dead, but I'll show you guys in here what I've done. So basically you can see down here, there's a little something attached to my battery terminal. And this is what, it's kind of like a quick release, a little jumper for the battery. So basically you see this little hole here, this screws into here. I don't know if you heard the car beep just now, but check this out. Now it works. <laughs> so basically all this little green cap does is whenever you unscrew it, it breaks the connection between the negative and saves the battery from having any parasitic draw. But the cool thing about it is it has this little fuse here that connects between it so that there's still enough power to power the computer so that you don't lose the things that are saved on it, like what time it is, the date, and all the other stuff that you'd have to reprogram every time your battery goes dead. So it's not really going dead completely. So now every time that I leave, I just screw this off and take it with me and then the car should be just as charged as when I left it no matter how long it is. Honestly, I'd rather have it on a trickle charger or something like that, but that's just not something that's a possibility for where I keep the car. All right. So if you guys saw the last episode, at the very beginning, I talked about this M50 manifold that I just had put on the car. So I mentioned that I had emailed RK Tunes for a revision for the new tune for having the M50 manifold because right now, the tune that's on the car it was for the stock manifold. And here's what this thing looks like. So you don't really need a tune for the M50 manifold, but obviously as you can see, man, the runners on the M50 manifold are so much bigger than the one that comes on the S52s and M52s. So getting a tune for that is going to make a big difference and give me some more power. So what I'm hoping is in the next, maybe in the next episode, I'll have the tune by then. We can get it put on the car. So I can tell you guys if a tune really does make that big of a difference, if it's really worth getting, or if you really should just throw the manifold on and leave it at that and save the money on the tune. But now that we have all that stuff out of the way, we haven't gone for a drive in the car for a while. So let's hop in and go for a rip. Just gotta grab that cold start, you know? The car has a dining axle back on it right now and it sounds okay, but I'm thinking maybe it could be a little bit louder. If you think I should get a little more done to my exhaust, put it down in the comments and let me know what you think. Good to be back in the M3. Now in today's little vlog, there's been something that I've been wanting to talk about or address on the channel for a while. And with the last video, I had so many comments about this topic that I figure that now's a better time than ever to talk about it a little bit. Something that gets said on the channel a ton in the comments is that that car sucks because it's not a real M3. So I want to address that comment in just a couple different ways. First of all, is you don't need to have an M3 to have a good time driving an E36. In fact, most of you who have E36s that are subscribed to the channel probably don't own M3s. Maybe you have a 328 or a 325, 323, or even a 318. All those cars are still great cars. But the truth is, you don't need to have an M3 to enjoy an E36 chassis. And I wouldn't tell you not to get one, or I wouldn't tell you that they're not good just because they're not an M3. A lot of the models that people choose for race car builds, or track car builds, or even drift cars are not M3 models, and they're still great cars to drive. And now with that aside, let's talk about the M3s. And what I want to really address today is why I think that the US E36 M3, or just E36s in general, don't get the love that they deserve. So first of all, I think when the M3s first came out, the knowledge that we don't have everything that the Eurospec M3 has, kind of put a bad taste in their mouth. And so because of that, it gave the E36 M3 here kind of a little bit of a bad name, but here's why I don't think that really makes sense. So let's look at the Corvette. You have the base Stingray, and then you have the top dog, 750 horsepower CR1. 
Now just because you don't buy a 750 horsepower Corvette doesn't mean that the Stingray or even the Z06 is not a good car to have or a blast to drive. So when you look at it this way, it sounds silly. If someone were to tell you that you shouldn't buy a Z06 or even a base Stingray Corvette because you can't get a ZR1, the top of the line car that has absolutely everything on it and the most horsepower, it sounds, it just doesn't make sense. The Z06 and the normal base Stingray are still great cars. Now transferring that to a more applicable to the BMW stuff here, just because I can't buy a Eurospec M3 here in the United States doesn't mean that the US spec M3 is not a good car. The S52 engine that comes in it is still a powerhouse. It has great power for a naturally aspirated inline six cylinder engine Engine, has a ton of torque, is a great daily driver, and makes a great track car. It's just a great platform to start on because of the chassis tuning, because of the suspension, and because of all the different engines that come in it, they're all good. And something that's kind of cool that I've been noticing here in the United States, I don't know about other countries, but the values of E36s, especially M3s, have been going up a lot in the recent years. And that's, I think, because that whole sour taste about not being able to get what's available in another country has faded off and people are beginning to realize just how great these cars are in all the different models, especially the M3. And if you've been subscribed to the channel for even at least the last couple videos, you'll know that I obviously do have a lot of fun in this car. About every single time I drive it. No, I totally pulled off a shift face there. One thing that a lot of people appreciated here about the M52 or the M50 and even the S52 engines here, especially the S52, is that they make really great platforms for modifying. They're ultra durable when it comes to beating on them like track cars. And they're especially a great platform to start with if you want to use forced induction. And hopefully you'll see some of that here in this car. Looks like we have another opportunity here to get on it a little bit. hear that chirp. She still pulls good, boys. So, you know, no doubt, if there were Eurospec M3s here available in the United States, that's the car I would have wanted over this one. But the truth is, we don't have those here. And just because I can't get that top of the line model doesn't mean that this isn't a good car and that you still can't enjoy it. And so, you know, I think in the past, the E36 really hasn't gotten the love that it's deserved. But I do think that people are starting to wake up and drive these things and realize that they're a lot better and deserve a lot more praise than they have gotten in the past. And maybe that's why a lot more people are buying them. Maybe that's why you see them a lot more at track days and why you see them being used a lot more as platforms for drift builds. So you know what? If you don't think the E36 M3 here in the United States or any of the E36 models are great cars, it's probably because you've never driven one. So. If you haven't driven one, get in one, take it for a drive, and I promise you're gonna fall in love with it. And even though it's not the fastest car I've ever owned, it's still the most fun car I've ever owned. And really, when you look at it, that's what matters the most. All right, well, that was a good little drive, and I'm glad that I got a second to kind of talk about that and give you guys my thoughts. One thing that I wanna know is, what do you guys drive? Why did you buy the car, and what do you like the most about it? Whether you drive an E36, whether you drive an E46, whether you have an M3 or a 318, let me know down in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys liked today's video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, remember to hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next one. Five ninety-three.